Well, hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn, or as a commenter on my previous video called it, a shithole of a workshop. But in any case, welcome back. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we're going to make another uh, hardy hole tool for my anvil. Uh, when I made these in a previous video, I considered making what's called a, a hot cut. But I really didn't think I would need one as I've got uh, a vertical bandsaw, horizontal bandsaw, a portable bandsaw. Uh, really didn't think I'd need anything to cut material on the anvil with. And I probably don't, but I do need uh, to be able to uh, split items uh, on, the, on the anvil. So today we're going to make, again, let's, what is, as I said, a, what's called a hardy hardy hole hot cut. It's going to be three quarters down here on this end to uh, fit in the hardy hole and then over here we'll have a 60 degree like a chisel point. Uh, now you may say that that looks very familiar to this but this of course is rounded for making bends whereas the hot cut will be chiseled. What I'm going to be using is a piece of this uh, old shaft that I had here. Yeah, it's kind of rusted and got some pits on it. Uh, it started out as two inch stock. I think it's down now after knocking some of that rust off, 1.95. But I didn't try to turn it to a uh, to get rid of all the pits because other than just a very small section in the center here. All that exterior is going to be uh, is going to go away anyhow. So let's turn around to the mill and get set up. To, uh, I think what we're going to do first is actually cut the chisel point on this end. Okay, my first thought was setting this in on a uh, thirty degree angle block, tightening the vise down, and milling out the chisel cut here or for the, the chisel edge. But I don't really have a whole lot to grip on down here. Plus the fact when this wedge is out, that can vibrate down no matter how tight I, I try to tighten it. There's a possibility of that working its way down. So I think what I'm going to do first is cut the three quarter inch uh, end that will go in the hardy hole, cut it first then that will give me a lot more to grip on to. So I'm going to set that right out to the end and tighten down. And what we want, again, is three-quarter inch square left here for an inch and a half over. So I'm going to bring the head down and we're going to get set up to mill that out. And I have checked with that setting up on those parallels, the uh, halfway line, the center point on there is below the jaws. So I am clamping on the fattest part. Once we get some flats on here, we'll be able to hold it a lot, lot steadier than we can on the round surface. And being that this is a uh, tool for a, let's come down a little bit more. Being that this is a tool for an anvil, <clears throat> a blacksmithing tool, if you will, it doesn't have to be near as precision as what you would normally do on a mill. The first thing I want to do is, is come out here and just bump the end with my end mill. I'll set the DRO. That's just touching there. I'll zero out the x-axis. Move in an inch and a half. That's the length we want on this three-quarter inch. And just zero out the DRO at that point. I'm going to slow down just a little. All right. We're zeroed out now on the z-axis as well. So what we should be able to do, this needs need to take 60 thousandths off of each of the four sides 
Um, what I'll do is take 60 off of this side, measure what I got left, determine exactly what I have to have for the three quarters. All right, at this inch and a half mark, I'm going to go ahead and keep working down to 600 thousandths. And I'm actually taking about 100 thousandths each depth now. There's 600,000. And now that I've got a, a cut in there, I'll step over and see if I can take that full 600,000. And again, that's what I like about these roughing end mills. Alright, there's our first flat side now. Now that we got that, <coughs> excuse me, we should be able to uh, to hold our material a little better now. This was this held good, but to keep this square, what I'm gonna do is simply back out. Now I'm gonna put that flat edge, flat side after I clean the burrs out of the way or clean the swarf out of the way. All right, now what I'm going to do is come over here, uh, set my zero again on the uh, DRO, touching this edge here, and mill off the flat on this side. I'll bring you back when I get uh, ready to do the third side. I'm actually uh, cutting this, I made that first cut at 300 thousandths and another 300 thousandths here, so instead of taking that little 40, 50, 60 thousandths at the time, I'm taking a full 300 thousandths here, and then when, we, then when we start milling out the rest of it again, just like we did the first side, we'll take all 600 thousandths. All right, so we've got two of our sides cut now looking about right we're going to turn it up and get a third side now but i think i need to mix up a little more coolant uh i noticed it was sputtering a little bit so i think i need to mix up a couple of gallons and put in my uh, reserve tank over there and then we'll come back and do the next two sides all right, again, we've got two sides cleaned up now. I'm going to put the piece back in with a flat surface against the uh, fixed jaw. I'm going to bring it on out here where I can get to it with the, with the dead blow or the, the seating hammer. Now, I took a measurement on this before we started milling off and determined about 60 thousandths off of each side should give me that. Should give me the desired 750 left in the middle. But to be sure, when you're doing something like this, two things you want to watch for. One, that you get your desired finished size on your workpiece. And number two, don't run into your vice jaws. So let's come down here of course, without anything running right now, I've got some parallels to raise this up. And let's zero out the Z axis DRO. We want 750 thousandths, three quarters of an inch. So let's come up 750 thousandths. It'll be, of course, read negative 750 on your, on your DRO. 
But now, with that locked down, I can see that I'm going to miss my vice jaws all the way around. So I'm going to set that as my zero now. Come back over here to the starting point. Should be the same zero as before, which it is. Now, I'm going to come up another 300 thousandths. This first cut, I only want to take half of it at a time. Then once I get this cut made through here, then I can go down to full 600 thousandths all the way around. And in situations like this, I want to keep an eye down in here on my two flat surfaces and be sure nothing moves. Now I can go back down to my to that zero I had set on the DRO which is going to be 750 thousandths up from the bottom. Alright, as was the case on the other two sides, I'm going to continue this taking about 250 thousandths on each step over, half the, uh, little less than half the width of the uh, uh, roughing end mill. I'll finish this side, turn it over, do the fourth side the same way, and then bring it back when we get ready to put the chisel edge on. All four sides are milled out now. I'll leave my three quarter in the middle, and I hit that three quarter, went in about five to seven thousandths on the two sides. Uh, I put it back in the lathe though, or I put it in the lathe, and just rounded these corners off just a little bit. Uh, I carry out to the uh, anvil and show you how it fits, but it's pouring down rain here today. And while the anvil's covered up, I wouldn't be if I was standing out there to try to put this in. But uh, uh, I did run out there and check it right quick. Uh, it'll fit in the hole fine now with these corners rounded off. And I was getting ready to do my 30 degree angle in here. I was thinking I would have a little bit more holding space. But I'm going to turn this around so you can see what I would run into. This is my 30 degree block here. If I set this in, hopefully you can see. I don't have that exact, but it's pretty close close now. Hopefully you can see I don't have any clip or uh, any uh, holding to amount to anything down here. It is now it's able to set on the, the uh, vice jaw so this couldn't vibrate down any uh, but it could very well pull that up. Same thing with this going down pulling that up. Just not enough room to hold there, but I want to put a chisel edge on this end out here. So I'm going to do something I've never done with this mill since I've had it. Uh, and I think I've had this equipment, uh, let's see, about, well, I guess probably close to three years now, if not a little more than that. But I'm going to do something I've never done with this mill, and I'm going to tilt the head. Um, I'm probably do a tram anyhow. Uh, so that'll give me a good excuse to get this retrammed uh, after I get done with this cut. But off camera, I'm going to tilt this head 30 degrees. I'll probably tilt it back this way uh, so that you guys can see the cuts. But I'll get that set up and bring you back after I get it uh, the head tilted. Okay, I think I'm set up now to put our 30 degrees on each side for the uh, 60 degree compound angle. I've got the piece mounted vertically now. And I've got the uh, mill head at 30 degrees. And what I'm going to do is just keep working back and forth here, advancing a little bit on the x axis as we go. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit at the time because I just don't know how good this setup is. I think I'm in there good and tight. But I'm going to try this side. If that works, then we'll take this out, turn it around, and do the other side. When we get down to depth here, I may have to switch over to a different style end mill, uh, something that's got a little longer cut. I think this diagonal is going to be about two inches, and this is an inch and a half here. 
but we'll see as time goes by. I'm going to swing the camera back around to the side uh, so that I've got room to work here, but uh, I'll let you watch it, good or bad. Alright, what I've been watching for, <clears throat> there's a point right in here where I had this in the lathe and faced off that end that indicates the center to me. I'm at 800 thousandths on the DRO from where I touched off begin, to begin with. Uh, and since this is a little less than, than two inches, that's, that's pretty, it's coming out pretty close. I'm going to go another 50 thousandths so. So I'm at 850 thousandths from where I touched off and make one more pass there and I think that will come up to the uh, to that center mark. That's almost dead on that center. Alright, so what I've got to do now is back back off Extend the uh, quill down some. Get it down where it won't touch, of course. And now we're going to take this little shelf off down here. Hopefully I can get it at that and not have to extend the uh, end mill out anymore. just a tiny little shelf right down here but uh, as I say we're gonna carry this to the belt grinder after we get both sides done and we can knock that little edge off right there and and make this a good smooth surface now as good as this piece set in the vise and as steady as it's set there for that I really don't want to take it out so what I'm gonna do is swing the the mill head in the opposite direction, 30 degrees to the to the other side. Okay, I'm swung around to the other side now. I've just touched off and got my DRO set to zero.
just like before that left just a little ledge over here on this side but we're going to go over to the uh, uh, belt grinder and straighten that out or clean that up let's take a look at what it looks like Okay, I think you can see now what I was going for in a hot cut tool. So let's go over to the belt grinder now and clean this, these surfaces up, put a good flat surface, uh, finished surface on those, on both sides. Okay, I think we're ready to wrap this video up on this uh, uh, hardy hole hot cut. Pretty well pleased with the way it turned out. I could grind a little bit more and get those uh, end mill marks out, but I think this is perfectly fine like it is. Now I was going for a 60 degree compound angle and I just tilted the, uh, tilted the mill head based on the uh, pro protractor on it. But let's see how that did come out. Looks like it might be about 59 and a half. So I'm satisfied with that. Now this material that I made this out of, I have no idea what it is, whether it can be hardened or not. Uh, since this is going to be cutting hot metal all the time that's uh you know pretty much well on its way to molten state this really doesn't have to be uh hardened but the next time i get the forge fired up i think i'm going to put this in there at least this edge up here get it to a uh, uh, critical temperature and see if i can uh, see if it will harden if it does fine if it doesn't we haven't heard anything by trying so i appreciate you watching you take care and we'll see you on the next video